He saved his life. Who are you? I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. On set, he's gifted autistic surgeon, Dr. Sean Murphy. Hello, Freddie. Off it, he's 26-year-old British actor, Freddie Highmore. Lovely to meet you. Please G'day. have a seat. G'day. G'day. That's it. That's G'day. the one. You're good at that. Let me get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I you're good at accents. The Australian is not one I even attempt. Have you had a go at it at all? I have never. No, I, I, f I fear that now isn't the time. <laughs> hey, um, congratulations. Thank you. On your role and, and that fantastic show, The Good Doctor. Why do so many people love this show, do you think? I think it may have something to do with the with Sean's optimism, with his hopeful outlook on the world. I think having someone like Sean who's just refreshingly trying to always see the good in people reminds us that humanity, I think at its core, is essentially good, is, is lovely. <laughs> the Good Doctor is breaking ratings records. And, more importantly, breaking down barriers for people with autism. Eight-year-old healthy boy, status post-encounter with a shattered glass sign, numerous lacerations. His heart, it's his heart. It centres on Dr. Sean Murphy. There. Looks normal to me. A trainee surgeon at St. Bonaventure normal. Hospital. There's a concave deformity in the right atrium. Who has autism and savant syndrome. He has genius level skills in several areas. He has almost perfect recall. He has spatial intelligence and he sees things and analyzes things in ways that we can't even begin to understand. You were right. If anything, I hope the show can just spark further discussion, not just about people with autism, but how, for example, people with autism are treated in the workplace. Autism, a mental condition characterized by difficulty in communicating and using language and abstract concepts. That's the definition. Does it sound like I'm describing a surgeon? You know, not only people with autism will relate to Sean, but anyone who's felt somewhat different. I mean, that's in, I guess, in the way that I connect with him is, you know, anyone who feels like they've not had their fair shot in life or if they've been discriminated against in the workplace for whatever reason. Yeah. I think everyone will relate to his experience. Ah! You're scaring him. You're scaring him. You're scaring him. Are you? Dr. Sean Murphy? This patient's psychotic, Dr. Murphy. He's not psychotic. He's not psychotic. He's autistic. A lot of pressure to get this role right. How did you go about doing that? I understand you had like a an on-set autism consultant. Yes, uh, and she, Melissa, was there um, throughout all the pilots and has continued to be there now that we're shooting and reads all the scripts and offers ideas that then help us come up with this one unique individual. What do you want the money for? I want to buy a television. $1,600 for a and television? And $43. i am a surgeon. I get paychecks. You're not a surgeon yet. You're a surgical resident. There's a big difference in the paycheck there, pal. I'm not a child, pal. My mother's a school teacher who has autistic kids, and she said, you have nailed that role. There are, oh. there are kids that she teaches that are... That are like Sean. That are exactly <laughs> like Sean. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah, yeah, so you've done a very good job. You, you recognise the responsibility from the very start when taking on this role, and we were all very keen to make sure we got it right um, insofar, as, insofar as possible. I have a five-centimeter segment of proximal jejunum. It's... What's probably the longest, toughest medical jargony word? There was uh, cholangiopancreatography, I think, was one. That's a good one. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography? Cholangio... Pancreatography. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography? Okay, let's make the cut. We do about, I'd say, 45 minutes, an hour of surgery rehearsal before those scenes. Are you going to take it or not? which clearly isn't enough to feel in any way qualified to do a genuine operation. But at the end of them, you kind of feel like you could. You think, oh, yeah, I've done the heart one before. Yeah, pass me this. I know what to do. Like, I'll just open them up and it'll all be fine. Time of incision, 2.05 p.m. Hey, um, let's go back. I mean, you're now 26? Yes. You've been acting since you were five. Your dad was an actor, or is an actor. Used to be, yeah. Used to be. Um, your mother is a talent manager. Mm -hmm. for the likes of Daniel Radcliffe. Uh -huh. With all this acting going on, did you really have a choice about your career? 
I think so. Growing up, my the focus of my life wasn't acting. It was, you know, being at school and trying to get into the soccer team and getting my homework in and stuff like that. Being a normal kid. Yes, exactly. And you, lad? I'm Peter. That's not a pirate name. What about Dastardly Jim, eh? No. Just Peter. While only ten, Freddie had a breakout role in the fantasy drama Finding Neverland, alongside Johnny Depp. I thought she'd always be here. She went to Neverland. That breakout role led to a leading role as Charlie in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You found Wonka's last golden ticket. And here he is again with the late Robin Williams in August Rush. Do you know what music is? This guy's a reminder there's something else besides us in this universe. But for Freddie, acting wasn't everything. He soon turned his attention to full-time study. You went to Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, a double in Arabic and Spanish. Yes. Why, why do that? Why, do go to, why go to university and do that when you've got this fantastic acting career? I guess... It it sort of follows, it followed logically to me that, you know, having the chance to go to such a wonderful place to study and that that seemed like the, yeah, the logical next step. Can you give us some Arabic? Give you some Arabic? Well, there's just the basic, you know, marhaban, like, hello. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Okay, yeah. And, uh... I like football a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's two for you. Too. That's great. <laughs> Two's great. That was yeah. brilliant. Wow. But it would be in this major TV drama series where Freddie's adult acting career really took off. What sort of a person runs away from their sick child? Do you have any idea what pain she suffered? Feeling abandoned by her own mother. Starring as the evil Norman Bates in Bates Motel, a show based on the Alfred Hitchcock classic, Psycho. I know you killed that woman. And you, you are trying to pin it all on me and have me locked up. Well, I am not going to let you do that. Who's more fun to play, Norman Bates or Sean Murphy? I guess the current enthusiasm is certainly towards, you know, playing Sean as much as possible. And I think Bates Motel will always be special to me. And, you know, being the first time I was able to write and direct to and be involved in the, in the wider process. And, and the last two seasons especially, I think, from Norman's point of view, the sort of arc that he went on was, was, was lovely. Well, my friend, cheers to you. Yes, cheers. On a rooftop bar in Sydney's Darling Harbour. What do you reckon? Oh. Nice. It's nice. This is good. Yeah. Beautiful. I like Australia. This down to earth Brit is still getting used to the celebrity status the good doctor has brought him. Fame. How are you finding it? Um, I guess when you stand around outside with, with cameras pointing at you, then um, it, it draws a certain amount of attention. But in general, I think it's pretty good. So. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for coming to talk to me. No, You're a lovely you. young man, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. so much.